Weather models get a lot of screen time during hurricane season. In fact, you probably know a few by name. The Euro a little slower, the American model off to the west. Different models come up with different tracks, but why? To do that, I have to explain how a weather model creates a forecast. Contrary to what some people think, a forecast isn't made by looking into a magic ball, but by solving complicated equations. These equations, created years ago and learned by meteorologists in college classes that still give me nightmares, explain the atmosphere all around us. Velocity, vorticity, advection, phrases you might have heard of meteorologists use when explaining the forecast, are derived from these equations. These sets of equations explain the atmosphere, and by solving them, you could create your own forecast. The problem is no one has the time, paper, or the patience to do that. Once you solve one set of equations with an initial set of observations, you have to take your old answers and plug them in and do it over and over again for every block of time. Thankfully, we have computers which do the heavy lifting for us, and I do mean heavy, as weather models require some of the most complex supercomputers in the world. These weather models take in massive amounts of information gathered from observations, then plug in those numbers into the equations, and then solve them over and over again for every location which they cover for time periods ranging from hours to days. So if weather models take in the same information and solve for the same equations, why do they often end up with different solutions? A couple reasons for that. Though weather models use the same fundamental equations, they take different approaches into solving them with various assumptions leading to different results. Different models also handle geography differently, performing better or worse over mountainous or coastal areas. Finally, though there are a lot of weather observation sites to create those initial conditions needed to solve those equations, there's still a lot of holes where we don't have valuable info, so models have to fill in the gaps by, you guessed it, more assumptions. Despite all of this, weather models do their job wonderfully in illustrating the insanely complex atmosphere. I think that's a bit more magical than a crystal ball. For this week's Moment of Science, I'm Storm Team 2 meteorologist David Dixon.